Hey, welcome back to Monster Gaming. Uh, I wanted to talk about Ascension, the deck building game. Um, I might start doing some more of these. This is actually a uh, actual deck building game that you like a like a card game. Um, I'm just gonna turn the volume down on my earpiece here. Um, but this is a game that they've made into a mobile app, so you can play the exact same game. Um, mobile, you can play the computer, you can play online, things like that. Um, Really fun game, so if you've never played a deck building game before, um, or if you are into board games, card games, things like Magic, different things like that, um, this is another type of game that's been around for a while. Um, they already have the 10-year anniversary, uh, which I actually just picked up today. I, I have the um, ROTF right here. I think it's Return of the Fallen is an expansion. Now, when you get this game for free, you get the basic game, which is the COTG on the top there. Um, so you can either play that one, which is the original game, or the 10th anniversary, which is on the right side there, um, which I'll play because that's the one that I have. And then it comes with um, these other two expansions. I don't remember the names of them. Uh, let me see if there's any way to... I'm sure there's a way to, to figure out the names of those. Uh, let's see. So you can play two-player, you can play four-player... Um, this is a really, really, really fun game, and it's also very simple. Um, I think I'll start a game. I'm not going to finish the whole thing because it does take a little bit of time. It takes a little longer when you're playing uh, live with another person because you got to move the things around and then look at things uh, versus on here. It's a lot quicker. Um, so you basically start with um, two types of cards, and you start with ten of them. You shuffle them up. Uh, some are going to be buying cards and some are going to be attack cards. Uh, very similar to like a Hero Realms um, or DC, the DC deck building game, um, Star Realms. They're very similar. Um, the people that designed this game uh, used to be Magic players, very, very high level Magic players. And uh, they, you know, had some ideas to make a game and they came out with this. Um, the base game was very simple, but they obviously had ideas to add more expansions and things like that. Just like Magic, there's a lot of expansions. Um, but this one's a lighter game. Um, it's a deck building game, which means you start with uh, five cards in your hand. You have ten cards total, and then you acquire cards as you as you play. Um, and then you're building the deck as you go along. So you'll see here on the on the top that I'm playing the computer. Um, and then I'll kind of sh show you what we're looking at here. Um, I'll let him do his thing. So on the bottom here, you see I have five cards. Um, this is technically in my hand. Um, wait, what does this say? Hold on a second. You may banish a card from your hand. No, I'm not banishing anything. All right. Um, that's from the expansion that uh, uh, that triggered that, but I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. So I have five cards here that are in my hand, and I can choose to play them all. And then you can play them in whatever order you want to play. Um, so if you look at The Apprentice here, um, oh, let's see, how do I do that? Uh, do I double click it? Oh, okay. Uh, if you look at The Apprentice, it's a very basic card. It's just a basic hero, but it gives you plus one in this little uh, diamond looking thing. That's basically your your money in the game. So that's how you're going to be able to buy things. Um, so you start with, I think, eight of those, and then you start with um, two Militia. And the Militia are just basic, uh, and that's one attack power. So that those are the two symbols that you're going to start the game with. And then eventually, you know, you're know, you going to add more to those two things. Um, but that's basically the core mechanic. Um, now, I have all these, so I'm just going to say I'm going to play all of them. The computer is going to know like what you could afford and what you can interact with. Um, so this is quicker. They're kind of just giving you like here these green things are the things you can do Versus when you're playing live you don't have that so you really have to think a little bit more um, now um, There's a few different things so You're basically playing uh, Up to 60 see if you see the little star here that says 60 round one There's 60 points uh, when you play against two, uh play two players and as you acquire victory points um which is the star symbol, 
um, as you acquire those, then you're dwindling down from the 60. So whenever you completely run out of the 60 victory points between the two of you, that's how the game ends, which I like. Um, so there's kind of a finite um, time frame for the game, which I really like. So it doesn't, it's never going to go, well, sometimes it could go pretty quick, um, but it's never going to drag on and on and on and on and on. Um, like games like Magic and other games, uh, sometimes you're going to be healing a ton and then you're going to be um, doing a lot of damage and you're kind of stuck in that little loop of healing, doing damage, healing damage, and sometimes they can drag on and on and on. This one is not that way. The other thing that makes this different from a lot of those other games is this is not a uh, I'm attacking you and I'm trying to destroy you. Um, it's basically like both of us are in this world there's these monsters and these um, heroes and different things like that that we're both interacting with. And it's basically who interacts with this world the best. Um, there are a couple cards here and there, at least in, the, in this base set, um, that will interact with the other player. Just like you saw that one that was asking me to, if I wanted to get rid of a card. Um, but there's not a lot. It's more of like who plays more efficiently. Um, and gets the right cards at the right time, and then kind of builds their deck um, to come up with like a good uh, system of um, combinations of cards that work together. So I'm looking at my hand here. So I have five cards, of course. You always have five cards, unless you get a card that tells you you can do otherwise, but it's always five cards on your turn when you start your turn. Um, so I have one, two, three, four buying power, and it's showing me three cards here that I can buy. Um, so I know it's kind of small on the screen here. Um, there's the green, uh, Great Omen Raven. Uh, oh, on the bottom, there's the three dots on the right side, which means that there's three of those cards in the deck. So all of these on the bottom, it's going to tell you how many cards are going to be in play, which is nice. So then you, you know if you're going to see one later on or if you have to hurry up and get that card. Um, so the Lifebound Hero is a green color, uh, and it costs two. For me to buy that card when you buy it you acquire it you don't actually use it in your turn you just acquire it and you put it in your deck and then eventually it'll pop back up this one says name a card reveal the top card top card of your deck and put it in your hand it is the named card you gain three victory points um which is not bad i mean if you kind of know what your deck is maybe at the beginning of the game like right now i basically only have militia and apprentices so that could be a pretty good one 50 50 of guessing um, what it is that you have. Um, so so that's fine. Uh, runic Lycanthropy. Lican uh, you gain two buying power and unite. If you play or, or have played a life band hero this turn, gain two attack. So see how the, both of those cards would work together. If I had them both in my hand at the same time, it would trigger that second effect for the unite, which is really cool. Um, the other one is Arbiter of Fate. We already did the Fate. Um, so fate is a mechanic that came out in the expansion, and it, and it has been duplicated in a lot of the other decks too. Uh, basically means that as soon as this card enters play, and it goes right here into this little middle area here, uh, you do what it says. Um, but we already did that. So if I were to have it in my deck and I played it, it would say draw a card. You may banish a card in your hand or discard pile. Banish takes the, the card out of the game completely. So sometimes it's a good way to you know, uh, reduce your deck a little bit, uh, and only keep the stuff that's good. So I'm not really sure what I want to do. Um, I think I'm probably just going to grab this guy here. And as soon as you, um, get a card, uh, it gets automatically replaced. So this is saying when the center is the center row, each player may draw a card. Um, I forget how I do this. I think I do like, do I do it like that or like this? Okay. Like this. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to put this into play and uh, yeah, well, I guess I'll buy this one too. And then that gets replaced. Now on the top left here, you'll see a mystic, oops, sorry, a mystic, a heavy infantry, and a cultist. The cultist always stays there. So if there's nothing you can do for two damage, two attack, because you see the little the little red symbol with the, with the sword on it, that's your attack. So right now I only have a militia. That's the only guy that can attack, so I can't do anything attack-wise, but... If you did have to attack and there was nothing in the middle here to attack, you could hit the cultist for one victory point. Um, for two buying power over here, the heavy inventory is basically a stronger militia. 
So instead of giving you one attack like the militia, that will give you two, which is nice. At the beginning of the game, you're not going to have a lot of stuff that gives you damage, so that's that's a good one to, to, give, to pick up. And then the mystic costs three, but it'll give you two buying power, versus everything else you have right now is only one. So... I'm going to end my turn and I'm going to let them play. So whenever you set up this game, you're always going to have six cards here in the middle. It's kind of considered like the market. It's also considered like the, the storyline. Um, so those are the, the different um, uh, heroes, monsters. Um, there's also like machines or makanas that pop up. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm going to play all these cards. And again... So I have one, two, three, right? So I have three apprentices, but because of this one, I'm gaining another two. So the game is actually keeping track of it. So it shows five up here and then one attack. Um, the the Makana hero are usually um, pretty important. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scare out of fate. So even though there's a lot of text on some of these, they're very, very simple and straightforward. Um, that one only costs one. That's not bad. Each other play with other, then you may banish a card in the center row. Ooh, that's a good one to get through the cards in the middle of the table. What is this one asking me to do? No, I'm not banishing anything. It doesn't make sense to banish that. I'm going to get this one, though, because I like that. So one thing you're going to notice, too, is that you're going to be getting points. I haven't attacked anybody yet, but if you look at all the monsters, um, they're usually giving you some sort of reward. If you look at the two monsters on the right side here, it says reward. You can gain two victory points or gain two um, gems. The Bazu, Duke of Scorn, very expensive. But you would gain vic four victory points, and then each opponent either discards a card for each construct they control, or puts all constructs into the discard pile. That's a very powerful monster. Um, now, like I said before, the monsters don't go into your hand. The monsters would be defeated, and they'd go up here to the uh, void, this purple area here. Um, there are some cards randomly in different, different decks um, that might give you access to recover somebody from the void or affect them. So that's why that pile is going to be on your play area. You don't just toss it somewhere and forget about it because they could come back. Um, and it's also good to keep track of how many are in there because sometimes they'll say, depending on how many monsters are in there, this or this, this or that happens. Um, so I am going to play all. The one thing that I did want to... Um, what just happened? Oh, I'm naming a card. Um... I guess I'll name this one. How do I do it? Does it go like that? Okay. I think I was naming the card, and I don't think I guessed right. Um, the one thing that I wanted to mention is, since I don't have any attack power, like this is not this is not good. Um, hold on. Let me uh, buy a card here. Draw a card. I don't need to be banishing. Okay, I'm going to get this to the garden. Because it's going to give me an attack power next turn. Um, but I do need some more attacks. So I'm going to pick up the heavy infantry. Because I need to start doing some damage. Um, and then I still have two more buying power. So I'm going to buy another one. Um, so. If you look at a lot of the cards here. Like the purple ones here. The green ones here. Um, you'll see on the bottom left. There's a number. Those are actually victory points. Um, that you earn at the end of the game. Um, so it is good to collect heroes. It is good to to, to buy those, those type of cards. Um, the monsters, when you defeat them, you gain the reward immediately as soon as they're defeated. Um, so that's kind of how, you know, my points are going up. And I only have three points and they only have two points. So we're not really doing anything amazing. Uh, I'm going to hit the cultist. I need to start getting some points. So that'll get me one point for hitting me in the face. Um... And I got that second one from this one. Oh, right, because that's not... I was looking at the uh, that one over there. So I'm going to get this too. Um, I'll get another one. I'll start doing some damage and stuff. All right. 
So there's a bunch of cards in the game. So um, just playing two player, I think it says right there, there's 150 cards total. We're not going to go through all the cards. So every game is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you, there's some cards you'll see, you know, multiples of, some you won't. What is this asking me about? Um, am I drawing two cards? I'm trying to figure out what it's asking me to do. Oh, I'm trying to name a card. Uh, uh, I guess I'll name this one. Where am I supposed to put it? Go here. Select. Nope. But the cool thing is that even if you try to guess the card, even if you guess it wrong, you still get something. So now I do have some attack power. Uh, awesome. Uh, okay. So now I can destroy this one. And then it says that I can banish a card that was adjacent to it. Acquire a hero without paying its cost. Place it on top of your deck. Uh, can I afford that though? No. Mm, I want to banish that because if not, he would probably buy it. And now I can buy these things here. I don't want that great omen thing anymore. It's kind of annoying. And there's another one of these. I'll grab one of these. I'll get another infantry. All right. So I guess I'll do a little a little wrap up here. Um, the game's fairly simple. Like I said, you have these um, six cards here. We're both going to have access to them on our turns. And then um, you're basically, main, most of the time, basically all you're doing is you're seeing how much can you buy and how much can you attack. Uh, now, there's no constructs in here either, which I wanted to show you guys. Um, I don't want those ones. I don't want that one either. I'm going to hit the cultist, get another free victory point. I'm going to get another one of these. Um, I don't want that. And we're pretty close in points. Um, uh, yeah. Nothing super exciting yet. It looks like I can defeat this Corrosive Widow. Each opponent must choose and destroy a construct they control, but he doesn't control one. I don't think. But I want the victory points for that. Uh, I don't want that either. I'm going to get this so I can buy something more. So the, a lot of the time in the game, you're trying to decide, is it a good time for me to be doing a lot of attacking or do I need to get more heroes that are going to give me effects or things that are going to help me out? And just keeping a little bit of an eye of what they're up to over there, see how many points they have, because you can see uh, how many points they have with the little, the little tokens when you're actually playing the game. Um, and then... Like, there's only 34 more, four more points. So the game is almost over, uh, kind of. Uh, look at this guy. Can I get that one? All right, maybe if I speed it up a little bit, we'll get there. Okay, so there's a mechanic kind of construct there. The That's what I wanted to show you guys. The mechanic constructs. Um, when, when you play them, they actually stay in front of you. Um, so it's almost like they're part of every single hand that you have. Uh, I don't think I want to banish anything. That's fine. I keep getting that stupid thing. That's fine. Basically, it just lets me draw another card. All right. I do want to get this construct up. Um, so once you put that into play, let's see. Hold on one second. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. And then it's fixing. Wow, okay. Uh, once you get the, the mechanic constructs, you put them in front of you, and whatever the ability that's on it, you get to use that ability every single turn. Um, so those ones are really cool. Uh, then there's the void construct right here. It says once per turn, gain this or gain that. So those are also really nice. Um, 
guys got to try to ramp up a little bit here. Uh, once we're talking the first time you defeat. Perfect. I'll do that. This is getting kind of long, but I'm hoping that um, we'll move we'll move through it pretty quick. Let's take a look. Because now I'm thinking about the um, the points at the end of the game. So I'm looking at the bottom of the cards because I'll tell you how many points these will give you later on. Ooh, that one's a good one. Be able to buy a card that's cost four or less. That's okay. There's a lot of fighting power. Jeez. Okay. All right, let's see. Mm, I'll get that one. I'll get that just to get the free point on my turn. I guess I could have hit him again. Oh, well. If you are looking at the cards, you'll notice that they're pretty easy. I missed this card one. Um, okay. Discard that one. That's fine. Oh, wow. You got a bunch of points that turn. Uh, I'm going to play all of these. Acquire here to the top of your deck. I'm gonna get this one just because that's gonna give me more points later on, if even if I don't do anything with it. Uh, so I have four attack, but there's nothing that does four. Because I got the two from the runic lycanthropy. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Let's see, I'll get that one. Yeah, so the game's almost over now. I have four more points than him, but I'm not quite sure how many points he has in his cards. He might have a good amount there. Sometimes people win that way. Because they get more points from the cards. Power Festival. You must banish a card from your hand. I'm going to banish this one. And then acquire a card to your hand. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Um... Uh... Oh, I guess I'll do that. All right. It looks like I have some constructs down here, which are really going to help me out. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to end my turn. And I won. I think I had... Um, I had the most points in my cards... Okay, so I had 34 uh, victory points, but in my cards, I had 31, so I ended up winning. Um, that's the one that's tough to, to gauge. Um, how many points does a person have in their cards? Because you don't really see them. It's like hard to count those. So that's why you got to be cognizant. Do I have more points, uh, victory points that I'm getting right now, or... Or not, or do I, or should I worry more about just getting cards that are giving me points later? So interesting game. It plays really quickly. Um, there are a lot of duplicates of some of the cards, of course, so you will get very familiar to them, with them. I mean, um, and then there's a ton of expansions that you can get and things like that. So you can always go further than that. Um, but that's basically Ascension deck building game. Um, I'm a really big board gamer. I have a lot of board games. Uh, always buying more. Um, at some point I would like to do some short videos on either how to play or maybe just a quick review on some of the games that I have. Um, I did have a different channel before that I did that and it was nice. It was fun. And I think it'd be interesting for, for you guys to check those out. Um, but for now, if I see some apps of those games that, that seem pretty good, cause there are some good ones, uh, maybe I'll do that on here. So please comment below if you'd like to hear some more about some really fun board games. Um, uh, that'd be fun for me to, uh, 
to do some videos on some of those that I really enjoy. So thanks for watching. I know that ran very long. Um, hopefully you understood some of the game. I know we moved kind of quick and some of the stuff you probably didn't get a chance to read some of the cards, um, but it's very simple. You're either buying or you're killing on your turn. Um, and then you use uh, a lot of the heroes that you get um, to give you um, extra extra abilities. Um, and then you're building your deck as you go. So eventually you might have 50, 60 cards in your hand when you start out with 10. Um, so you could have uh, a lot of options there, a lot of variety, a little push and pull. Uh, from you and the, the other people you're playing. You can play this up to four players, which is nice. I've only played with two, um, but I'd love to try it with two or th uh, uh, three or four. Um, there's a solo variant as well that you can play, um, and then there's other variants as well that you can play, but super fun game, really enjoying it. Like I said, it's been out for a while, so if you're in the board gaming community, you've probably heard of it, and if you haven't, it's definitely one to check out. So thanks for watching, everybody.